We live drums. Okay, let's take a look at the parts of the snare drum. Well, the first thing we have is a series of lugs. They're called lug screws, and they look, they look like this. It's, it's a lug screw. It's a, it's a long screw that goes into the drum, and it has a little washer on it. And it goes into what's called the lug nut, which is inside the drum. We use a thing called a drum key, which looks like this. This is our drum key. And the drum key is used to tighten and loosen our nuts on the drum. On this particular drum, I'm going to take off this rim here. You can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lugs that go into, into the, the shell of the drum where they screw in and they screw in, they're in equidistant positions. So unlike a guitar string where you have, or a violin string where we have the string fixed at this end and we're, we have at this end over here where we're tightening the one string, on a drum we have eight individual points where we tune the drum and they naturally need to be all exactly the same. When we work on timpani tuning, we'll talk in much greater detail about, about the tuning and how we get them to be all exactly the same. But uh, suffice it to say that we want them the same. Okay, so I'm going to take off our rim right here. This particular rim is a beautiful die cast rim. That means it was poured uh, and uh, it's one piece. It's not been folded or bent or anything like that. Underneath that, we have a, a, a skin, or a drum head as it's called, and this particular skin is uh, made out of mylar or plastic. You can see that that just goes really on top of the drum. This is a, a 14 inch by five and a quarter inch uh, deep drum, and this particular drum uh, takes this 14 inch head. Batter head goes right on the top. You can pick these up at any music store. When they wear out, it's time to change them, much like the parts in your car. Okay, so they require regular wear, and we consider the heads to be disposable. And when we talk about percu percussion care and repair and maintenance later on, we'll talk about how you replace these skins. Okay, the next part of our drum is the actual shell. And as you can see here, isn't it great the way everything's just coming off? I feel like I'm on a cooking show, really. It's fantastic. Everything's ready to go. Um, this particular shell is made out of, out of uh, brass. It could be made out of aluminum or aluminium, as, as we in Australia call it, or it could also be made out of wood. This particular one, when you get a close look at it, you can see that we have these dual lug nuts. You can screw in one on top here, and, and the bottom one goes in there, and they're held together, and we have the eight sets of lugs going around the shell. On the outside of the shell, here, you can see what's called the bearing edge. This is the edge where the skin, where the, where the skin uh, comes in contact with the shell. The bearing edge, it's very, very important that it be absolutely smooth with no nicks or dents and that our drum be perfectly round. If you uh, drop your drum, if it falls off the stand, if the car rolls over it, any of these things, and your drum is not perfectly round, well, of course, it can't be perfectly in tune can't achieve our best sound. So it's good, it's important that you, uh, if you're buying a used drum kit or a snare drum, that you check to make sure that your bearing edge is not, not damaged, that you know a truck didn't drive over it or something like that. Okay, underneath that, of course, is our, our snare head. And you notice that this particular snare head is um, very thin. You can hear by the sound, and it's crackly. It's super thin mylar, and it's designed to have the best response when we have a thin wire or something going across it. So I know it's hard to see, but it has its flesh hoop, which comes around here. This is called the flesh hoop, and when I show you a calfskin head in a minute, um, you'll see how they're put together. And, and it, has, it has the mylar attachment. And at the bottom, of course, we have our bottom, uh, bottom rim, which has an indent right here for the snares to go through. And this is the makeup of the snare drum. Let's have a quick look 
at the snares that go on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see this here, but I'm sure we're gonna try and get a nice close shot of these snares. And uh, you can see that they are snappy wire. They're curly wire. And we've got, I think, 24 strands of curly wire. And they're actually soldered onto that. They go onto the bottom of the skin like this, and then we stretch them. And that's how we make our sound. Once again, we'll pick up this beautiful Brady snare drum. And this is made out of hardwood, and this particular one is she oak. Very, very hardwood, uh, an Australian hardwood. And she oak has some wonderful properties. The bearing edge in this particular drum is not rolled over like it was in the metal one, but it's actually carved into the drum, and it's a beautiful bearing edge, nice, nice clean edge. On the snares, if we get a close look at these snares, you'll notice that I have some blue wires here. Very interesting wires. These are cables which have been covered. They're nylon covered cables. And we also have some snappy wires. So we have two different types of snares on the bottom of this drum. And they create a different sound entirely. Now, we'll have a look at some more snares when I go through our lovely collection of snare drums. Some of our newest drums have uh, the ability to have three or four different kinds of snares. The other part of the drum that we haven't looked at but need to look at is called the strainer. Now, the strainer is this little knob right here. You can see that, that I've got it here and that when I turn it on, it tightens the, drum, the snares at the bottom. When I loosen it, it has the snares off. Sometimes we call that, it used to be in concert band music, to say muffling your snares. That means with the snares off. Snares on, snares off are two of the beautiful sounds that the snare drum can make among many. And we can have all kinds of variations on that strainer. So uh, we have a lot of different types of strainers. This particular strainer, as you can see here, has the cables connected here. They're screwed on. They're loose right now. I have a little nut here that I can tighten with my fingers or loosen so I can control the amount of tension on the snares themselves. If I loosen it a lot, you can hear how it's very loose and rattly. Right? I can control every aspect of these beautiful snares. And remember that each type of material that we make our drum out of can make the drum sound different. Now, when I next come back, we're going to look at the world of snare drums, and I'm, we're going to look at the large family of different drums that, uh, that are used by wonderful composers and musicians. Thank you. We live drums.